Hi, so after doing yesterday's video on this, I wasn't actually going to do a video today, but obviously I listened to the comments and there were lots of things really that came up that I thought were really interesting, but the most important thing was the friction caused by that ring bearing that I had in there. And yes, it was a fair bit of friction and you could hear it rumbling away. I was always unhappy with that because of course the idea behind this thing is it needs to spin freely. So what I've done is I've created this arm here, and you'll have a better look at it in a minute when it's outside. And what that's done is mean that this is incredibly free to spin. So I'm going to be quiet while I spin it because you'll hear there's no noise. Isn't that quiet? So there's no noise because it's no contact really worth speaking of. Of course on the uh, central axle there is a couple of bearings. It is contacting on them, but there's no rumbling, no squeaking, no noise, and look how it continues despite that little push. Now it's really important it does that because we have no reactants in those coils. So the minute that starts to spin, it starts to generate. And it starts to generate real power because it is actually under load all of the time. Because those capacitors, of course, are getting charged. Now the capacitors are whatever voltage they get charged to. You can work out how much energy has been produced in terms of joules by looking at the capacitance, and there are 1,000 farads each, and there's 14 of them, so there's 14,000 farads, times whatever the voltage is will give you the amount of energy that's actually been stored in there from this thing. And that's real energy. That's real power that can be used to do stuff like charge your phone, run a motor, light a light. So it's already under load by charging those capacitors. Now, of course, we want to do something else with that, and the capacitors, of course, will self-discharge, so there are things we want to do about that, but I'm thinking battery and blocking diode, maybe, something like that. But this is already producing energy. Now, I've done a, a 1 16th of it, which is uh, sufficient, really, for me to test it, and we, of course, have no wind worth speaking of. We're getting a little blow, tiny breeze in this sort of region of, I don't know, 2 to, 5, 2 to 0.5 meters per second. So not enough to even start a um, commercial generator. The startup speed of those is significantly higher. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's about 3 meters a second or something. It needs to even begin turning. This, remember, is all about being able to capture that lower energy that currently nobody's even looking at. Now the main things I've paid for on here are obviously um, the bearings and the magnets. Everything else has been scavenged from somewhere and reused. So this frame, it's a piece of shelving. This is a pipe. I did buy the pipe. So there's a bit of pipe. There's a bit of whiteboard here. So it's all been scavenged really with tiny amounts of beer that have been paid. Now, I'm actually super impressed by it. I really think it's doing what I want it to do and I'm really pleased with that. So I'm go we're gonna take it outside and have a look at it outside. So I was actually a bit unhappy about that ring bearing. I mean, it worked after a fashion, uh, but it did create a reasonable amount of friction, I thought. Uh, and really something like this, what I'm aiming for is as frictionless as I can get it. So obviously I made a modification to it. Now what I've done is I've welded up this arm here and hung the whole thing from that arm rather than have it resting on the ring bearing. So that arm is carrying the weight of everything. And it is uh, rotating on the bearings in the central spindle. That central axle is fixed top and bottom and that bottom is resting on a thrust washer. So the whole thing is incredibly free to spin, which is absolutely what we're after. Now I can tell you it begins to spin at point 0.1 meter per second so the lightest breeze will get that spinning if we get anything more than that then it will spin quite quickly at the moment I've got a wind speed meter at the moment I'm measuring a wind speed of zero so really we've had a little bit of a blow and then no wind and then a little bit of a blow and then no wind which is exactly the kind of conditions you get most of the day but this thing is generating. It has actually charged those capacitors up to 8.97 volts. Now they're a thousand farad capacitors. There's obviously, uh, I think there are 14 of them. They've been charged to that voltage. So you can calculate how many joules we've got in those capacitors if you want. And that'll tell you the energy that has actually been harvested by this thing in the 10 minutes I've had it, had it out here. And so that is usable power. Now people have been saying all you're doing is measuring the voltage and why don't you put it under load. 
you've got to realize that if it's a charging capacitor, it is under load. So this thing is already under load. All we have to do really is know what the capacitance are and read the voltage and we can calculate how many joules of real power is stored in there. And then of course those joules can be converted easily to do work just by connecting a motor or a light. So we know what energy is in here and we know how this will perform under load. Now obviously I've done a quarter of it. And we could get 16 times that by doubling the amount of uh, coils and putting them top and bottom, as have been suggested by lots of people. So this entire quarter done is telling us a lot about the performance of this. Now because we've put this, look it's, it's spinning already, and that is uh, 0.7, that little blow is stopped now, is 0.7. And you can see that it's actually um, really quite free to turn because of the rotation it's getting. But where was that? But we can tell what this thing uh, performance is going to be from the quarter, uh, the 16th, that I've already done. It spins beautifully freely and it generates while it spins and it generates real power under load and stores them in those capacitors for use. Of course, what we could do is take that capacitor bank and charge a battery with it or we can um, and store it further or just connect it to something directly. Now, it is obviously a harvester. It's getting those small amounts of energy and storing them because this is the kind of day we have most of. I mean, it's the one thing that I moan about all the time. So I have made an extra change. It's out in the car park with uh, just tiny breezes every now and then, and it is busily generating and storing those, uh, that generation. And you can see, again, we've got a really light breeze. That was actually 0.7 of a metre and off that bad boy goes, which is pretty cool. One point one meters per second. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Anyway, I thought I would share that with you as we're doing uh, yet another test and I, I quite like to test things when I've done something. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. If we do get some real wind, obviously I'll give a report on what that's doing.